Good morning. Good morning. There you go. <laughs> uh, does anybody not know what we're talking about? Static cables. Static cables, yes. This hopefully isn't new for most of you. Um, but this is really, really good review to have because uh, I know we're not all cabling every single day. So I know we've got trucks and things in here right now, so we'll have to make do. But if you can't see what's going on here, just make sure you can when we start talking about this. Um, so static cabling. Um, when when do we want to use a static cable over a dynamic cable and why would there be a difference schneider you want the tree to have minimal movement when stress or forces are being applied to it yeah no i like that yeah when you want to have minimal movement minimal stress towards the tree the dynamic cable allows a little bit of movement a little bit of wiggle Static cable is going to allow less of that. What else? The tree's failing. If the tree's actively failing, yeah, yeah, and if they're, yeah, yep. And if if the owner is is dead set on keeping the tree, yeah, for sure. If you're trying to train a limb. Trying to train a limb, yeah, yeah. If you want to if you want to pull a, a limb or a lead in a certain direction or, or give it some some more support, yep. Um, what's the, what's the lifespan of these cables? Anybody know? 10 years. 10 years? Four years. How many? Four to five. Four to five. Yeah. Situational. Situational. Yeah, probably. I probably have to agree with TJ. It's probably situational. Um, once these cables are in there, you can arguably stay in, you know, for the life of the tree. You know, we, I think the language we put on the work orders, TJ, you can correct me is, you know, 10 year lifespan um, just before they need to either the cables need to get replaced because they've been overgrown or um, they're just have become too low uh, and they need to install a new one because the tree continues to grow. When we're installing static cables, what, uh, what are you all looking for? Like you walk up to a co-dominant silver maple and you need to put one static cable in it. What's, what's kind of going through your head? You gotta, yeah, need to, tr what's that? Where the defective union is. Yeah, yeah, where, what, what kind of union are you looking to support? So if, you know, <laughs> this is my tree, you know, we've obviously got tires instead of tree parts, but if this is my tree, I've got two codominant leads uh, that are growing up, you know, like columns right here. There's gonna be a union at some point at the bottom that I want to support. Why might I want to support that union? There's targets under it. There's targets under it. Might have decay, might be, might have included bark. What's, in, what's included bark? Included bark goes inward between both unions pushing those two. Yep. Yeah, so if I have a codominant silver maple, something looking like this, right? I've got that tight kind of V union instead of a, a nicer kind of U. Um, if you think of like tectonic plates, eventually those things, those limbs, uh, geez, those leads are going to grow larger and larger and larger, and they don't just fuse together like most people think. You know, they're going to start kind of mushrooming out, um, you know, kind of pushing against each other a bit, and it's going to collect rainwater and soil and animal feces and all kinds of stuff that's really going to allow decay to enter, right? So, codominant unions are scientifically less strong than a union that has a nice wide uh, kind of crotch to it. So, that's where these cables come into play because not every tree has just perfect unions. I think we all know that. So. We're looking for, like Storm said, we're looking for the union that we want to support. Normally that's going to be, um, you know, probably near the, the bottom of the tree, if not the very bottom. But then like Mac mentioned, Mac mentioned two thirds. What, what about two thirds? Why is it important for us to put a cable at two thirds? 
Is it two thirds from the ground? Two thirds from the union we're trying to support? Two thirds from the top down? Two thirds from the union up. Two thirds from the union up. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, a lot of smart people determined that was probably the best uh, case scenario, and you will find that in these A300 standards, right? So, real quick, A300 standards for tree, shrub, and other woody plant management standard practices for supplemental support systems. That's a mouthful, but this pretty much has your playbook, kind of your rules, some diagrams and things of, of different uh, cabling support systems and, and why it's important. Um, supplement that with the best management practices. This is basically a more digestible version of this. Okay. Both of these are really, really, really informative and they take about a total of five minutes to go through both of them. Um, but in here, you'll find that the best practice or the A300 standard that you should aim to put a static cable two thirds above the union that you're trying to support. So if you've got uh, a hundred foot tree, right? And it, the union is on the, on the ground, like it's literally coming out of the ground. How, how many feet up should you try and put that union? 66. 66 feet. Yep. And then you supplement from there. If your union's 20 foot off the ground, I mean, you don't have to do math, but just eyeball, where's that two thirds line? Okay. What are some limiting factors that we might run into when it, when we're trying to hit that two third mark? Diameter of the wood. Diameter of the wood. Yep. What else? Scaffold branches. Scaffold branches for sure. Yeah, if the tree has some limiting characteristics, like it's been topped in the past, uh, it's got hollows, cavities, decay, all those kind of things. There might be other stems or limbs that are in the way of a direct, you know, line from one side to the other. Yeah, yeah, like if, if this is our tree, there might be another stem growing right up between these two, right? That's gonna complicate things. You know, does that stem come out? Does it stay? Um, can we work around it, et cetera? Anything else? At that point, would it be acceptable to go lower? How low is How low is too low? Too low. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to have to be a judgment call, I think, on, on the crew lead and the crew part, right? Two thirds is obviously the gold standard, but not every tree is, is made the same and, and uh, not every situation is going to be the same. So in that case, is it better to go higher or is it better to go lower? Huh? Could you go through? <clears throat> through the, the middle, the middle lead. If there was a third lead here? Yeah. To get to the other side, drill a straight hole through. I'd say probably not, just because the cable's gonna get tweaked in a weird way. Um, I'd be more concerned with drilling a hole through that stem and getting yeah. movement than decay entering that hole. That yeah, and that's what I, I agree with Storm. Yeah. Yeah, because obviously these leads, like if you're going to have a drill a hole through a third lead, the cable, like it's basically going to slide along the cable when it get wind, gets windy and it'll never compartmentalize. So, good questions. Um, okay, so we've established we've got two third, the two third rule. Um, you know, we've talked about unions. Um, now we've kind of got a game plan. We're up in the tree. We need to put a cable in. Um, take a look at your sheet. Who wants to read the first step of how to install a rig guy uh, installation? Actually, pause. Let me let me back up just a little bit before we go through these. Um, who in here has used a different cabling system than the rig guy cabling system? Yeah. What have you guys used? Wedge grips. Wedge grips. Yep. What did you say? Like through bolts, yep, yep. What else? J lags, yeah. Anything else? Chain. Chain, yeah. Anybody, has anybody installed a, like, what we, I guess, what do you, what do you call it? Like the dog leash yeah, that you see? <laughs> the clothesline, clothes yeah. I would say the last two are probably inappropriate cabling techniques. Um, tra yeah, <laughs> traffic light, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's a story. Um, 
So yeah, so this is just one of what I would, I, th I would argue to say is probably three viable cabling methods. So you've got the J-Lag and what I would group with the through bolt uh, system that uses, uh, what are those? Dead grips. Yeah, dead end grips, thank you. Uh, dead end grips, then you've got the wedge grips, which were those black knobs uh, that are very similar to these rig guys. And then you have the rig guy system that we're gonna talk about this morning. This is the system that we use um, it's definitely my favorite. I think it's a lot easier than the other systems. Now, um, I'm, I'm not a rig guy uh, salesman, but it does also help reduce the uh, exposure to the tree because instead of drilling a larger hole for a J lag, right, something about yay diameter, you're drilling a 5 16th inch hole all the way through and then pretty much plugging that with a quarter inch cable so there's only a sixteenth of an inch difference uh, in that hole you know I think on a healthy mature tree that would probably take I don't know maybe less than a year maybe more than a year to compartmentalize around on on the ends of those so it's pretty pretty minimally invasive but that's some of the, the pros of the rig eye system now Step one, uh, let's just go around. Mac, you wanna read step one for me? Um, step one, drill a hole completely through the trunk and branch to be cable. Make sure this hole is 1 16th of an inch larger than the EHS strand being used. Yep, all right. So, drill a hole completely through the trunk branch to be cabled, right? Pretty, uh, pretty standard. Now, Obviously my, my trunks are a little small for this bit. <laughs> um, but you know, we use drills and we use these five sixteenth inch auger bits uh, for this process. I think this is a, I don't know, it's either probably an 18 inch, maybe 24 inch bit. Um, you would take this, you know, you're up either in a bucket or a lift or you're climbing, good work positioning. Take this, drill through the lead right pull that out and then you're going to take uh your cable and you're going to thread it through make sure you're not wearing gloves that can get caught yeah good point make sure you're not wearing gloves that might get caught in the bit and get wrapped up and hurt your fingies okay next step lily Yep. Yeah. So next step, put the strand in, make sure you've got about six inches or so on the other end of it. A um, couple different theories on doing this in terms of how much cable do you need, right? Who here has what they think is a good system for eyeballing how much cable they need in the tree? TJ? I like to lay it out on the ground. Yeah. And have a pre cut for low dynamic or static. Yeah. Yeah, have it laid out on the ground, kind of eyeballing plumb beneath what you think are going to be the two points you need to put the cable, laying it out on the ground, maybe give yourself a couple extra feet and cut it. I like that. I've used that a lot. Anybody else? Use a pull saw. Use a pull saw? Yeah, that's a really good one. For sure. Anybody else? Depends if you have a ground guy or not. Yeah, use the tail of your rope for sure. Does anybody not cut the cable? Do they pull the whole thing up? Like they leave it in the spool, pull the whole thing up? I'm in a bucket sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Not yeah, it's, it's not fun. I was just curious. Um, yeah, so there's definitely, definitely several ways. Uh, I know other people use tape measures for things similar to this, um, but anyhow. Okay, so yeah, we've inserted the cable through one end, we're gonna, we're gonna Pretend that's this end. <clears throat> What's step three? Step three, slide the outer block of the wire stop onto the strand, smaller hole towards the tree. Yes, okay. So if you can see that kind of grainy picture, um, these rig guys, they have two parts. There's like the female part uh, and the cone. This uh, smaller end needs to face 
the tree, right? This slides onto the cable, and then you have the larger hole with the tapered end facing out. Okay, that's what they're talking about here. Yep, number four. Corey? <clears throat> uh, twist or turn the strand counterclockwise until you get the evenly distributed pattern in the photo. If you don't get it the first time, just retwist the strand to the original shape and try again. Do not try to bend the wires into the correct pattern by hand. Yes. So this is important and probably one of the most frustrating parts of this system is you have to open up the cable. And if you notice there's in that photo, there's six strands on the outside that are curly and you've got one straight strand in the middle. That straight strand in the middle needs to stay in the middle. That's very important. Uh, but then you get kind of this uh, hexagon pattern with the strands on the outside. I like to use a pair of pliers or something to do this. I know some people like to use their fingers. I don't like to pinch my fingers. Um, but yeah, you take the end of that strand and you basically twist it the opposite way that, it, that it's laid and it'll open up into that hexagon pattern. Um, now how far, like how, how far down the cable do you need to open this up? Like three feet, maybe four feet. You think so? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. evenly distributed. It's like, it's uh -huh. pretty good. And then it's easy to find out which one mm -hmm. the middle strand is if you go that far. And then you can just twist it back up and sure. it's good to go. For sure. Yeah. What else? Anybody else have any rule of thumbs for how far they got to twist, untwist the cable? No? I, I mean, honestly, like what Corey said, if, if he's got to twist it so many feet and then, and then wind it back up, that's totally fine. Like you're not going to hurt the cable by unwinding more of it. You just got to make sure you twist it back up before you, you know, obviously finish it. But um, as long as you have, again, this cable's already in here, right? You untwist that cable and it's splayed out and it's even, all, all the strands are even, that's what you're looking for, okay? What's next? Uh, Storm? You may also find a nut driver helpful in obtaining the correct pattern. Use one that is 1 32nd of an inch smaller than the strand being opened. Put the nut driver over the strand and turn the driver a quarter turn to the left to obtain the proper wire pattern. I have never done that. Has anybody actually done that? No. I, yeah, I don't think we do that, but it's a good, good tip. Uh, TJ, number six. Insert the taper onto the center wire, small end toward tree. Yep. So look at that photo right next to it. So you've got six evenly spaced curly wires on the outside. And then this cone needs to go on that center one, but it needs, the small end needs to be facing in because it needs to mate up with the inside of, of the receiver. Next. Using heavy duty eight inch long nose pliers in the middle wire over 90 degrees. This is not to hold any weight, but to prevent the taper from coming loose if wind reduces tension on the system. Yep. Okay. So we're getting closer and closer. I finished this beforehand, but we're getting closer and closer to this point. So if you look, the center strand in the middle here is bent over 90 degrees, right? These are obviously, these are gonna be longer before you snip them, but that, the reason behind that is that center strand captures that cone, right? So when you tension this, that center strand is gonna pull the cone in and set it further. Um, and then the cone is designed to pinch those six outside strands against the other piece. That's, that's, what, that's what we're aiming for here. So we're getting closer and closer to that. Next. Eight. Make sure when you are finished that the wires are distributed evenly around the taper, as in the photos. I can't stress how important that is, because if you have all six of your strands like on the left side or all of them on the right side, you have not installed this cable properly, right? <laughs> I think there's ob obvious repercussions for not installing the cable properly uh, in terms of like the storms we got a few days ago. Like you can have some, some very bad things happening. Uh, next. Trim the excess 
ends of the outer wires using Felco C3 wire cutters available for order on our website, leaving them extending approximately an eighth inch beyond the taper. Yep. Good advertising. Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, you don't have to use Felcos, but you can if you, if you want to. But yeah, some sort of wire snips need to be used to shorten up these strands. Now, um, when you're doing this, yeah, when you're doing this, you definitely need eye protection. I'm not gonna do it right now. Um, but you clip these things and these things will go flying, right? So if you wanna be nice, and I would argue we need to be nice, please don't just clip these and let them fall, fall into the yard, right? Cause like someone mows over these strands, they're gonna be really upset, especially when they go through their windows. <laughs> um, but yeah, these wire cutters are important because what you're doing is you are snipping the six strand, well, the, the one center strand and the six on the outside to shorten that up. Now, um, before we go any further, do you or do you not need to bend over the six outside strands? You do not. The only strand that you're bending is the center one over. Right? If you start bending the ones on the outside, you're not gonna allow the cone and the receiver to pinch those strands properly. That's how this is designed. Okay, number 10. An optional UV protected black vinyl finishing cap may also be installed. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know if we've ever actually used these, uh, but they do make caps to, to basically make this look a little prettier protect you or whoever else is maybe accessing the tree next time because obviously this is looks kind of like a flail uh 11. moving to the second branch strand drill your hole and insert the remaining end of your strand through it trim off any unneeded excess again lift six inches to place the wire stop over tension the strand using heaven's grip come along a tree protective strap. See our field installation video for details. Repeat step three and 10 for the second wire stop. Finally, release the tension of the system and, is, and inspect your work. Yep, thanks Angel. So, installing this system on the first trunk, fairly straightforward, right? We've just installed our rig guy. Uh, we've put the cable all the way through. Now, we gotta work our way over to the second trunk or if you know, you're in a bucket, that's easy, but if you've got a second climber, that'd be awesome. Installing it on the second side, you need to also install a come along or some sort of mechanical advantage, right? To tension this cable, okay? We use come alongs, you can use five to ones, you can use, you know, whatever. It just needs to be tensioned so that um, the cable will be holding uh, some of the load bearing forces. Now, again, so going back, take your drill to the other side, drill your hole. Once the hole's drilled, you gotta pull the, the cable through that. If you've got a ton of excess, you need to trim up your excess, right? Mac, you had, oh, okay. Um, you dr uh, Trim up your, ac your excess cable. We use grinders, right? Both the grinder and the drill, are these gonna hurt if they fall out of your hand and hit somebody in the head? Nope. Yes, <laughs> please, please use a lanyard. That's why this one's on here. Please, it doesn't have to be this one. It can be a carabiner and a loop or whatever. Please just use something so that if this kicks back, um, you're not gonna throw it at somebody on the ground. Now, um, grinders, obviously, I would recommend hearing protection, like the, all the normal PPE, safety glasses for sure. Um, is this an appropriate grinding wheel? No. no. Why? It's like it's too small. Mm hmm. It's worn out. Yeah. I would say this is probably getting really, really, really close to being thrown away. Plus, <laughs> it has a notch in the one side. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Has anybody seen those videos of like chunks of these in safety glasses? Or pictures, I should say, right? Now, these are no joke. 
Uh, you can see the size comparison, right? This one's been well, well loved, cut a lot of cables. Um, so if that is the case, please, I mean, there's extra ones in here. Just put a new one on. Don't overthink it um, and make it easier on yourself. So cut the cable with how much spare on the end? About six inches, give or take. Cut the end, put that away. Now, <clears throat> tensioning wise, we've got to use this come along. Um, we've got this handy dandy strap. Um, use whatever strap is rated. You can use a really long uh, nylon webbing loop. Uh, but pretty much this, does anybody know what this piece is called? What? Pork chop? It does kind of look like a pork chop. It's not a pork chop. What's that? Cable grab, yeah. I think it's actually, it's called a Haven's Grip. I don't know why. That's what it's called if you look for one, but Haven's Grip. This opens up and then clamps on the cable like so. Once that's on the cable, you want to take your come along and then you start the tensioning process, right? I'm not going to tension it here because obviously this is just going to start moving. But how much tension do we want to put in this steel cable? Just the right amount. Just the right amount. <laughs> Good answer. How much is just the right amount? Taut. Taut? Yeah. Situational. Situational? Like what your goal is with the cable. Yeah. Anything on the trees that's got leaves on it? Yeah. Like yes. Great point. Great point. So I, I agree with Harry. It's definitely going to be situational. If you are installing a cable in the winter, or yeah, if you're, you're, if you're installing cable in the winter and it doesn't have any leaf weight, on these leads, that's going to change kind of your tensioning factor, it should, in your head of how much tension do I really need to put in this cable, right? Because if you make this absolutely guitar string tight and then the leaf weight comes on in the spring, it's going to be even tighter, right? And you're not trying to literally rip these together. That's not the point of cables. It's the point is to support the cable or support the union rather. Um, so it is situational. Um, I feel like oftentimes I find myself kind of either tapping the cable to see how tight it is, how much play there is in there. Um, I wish I could give you like a rule of thumb, but I think a smidgen of a belly is probably okay, but you don't want something that's like laser beam in the tree, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. and you, you don't want, yeah, you don't want a big droop, like you don't want a big belly. Um, for those of you that have installed dynamic cable, you know you want somewhat of a belly in that cable so it allows it to move until it gets real windy. You want less of a belly <laughs> than that. I'm talking, you know, maybe like a couple inches of, of droop. Okay? You want that while you're tensioning with the come along on it or is your final product? Good, good call. Thank you, Storm. Final product. Yeah. Yep. So what does that mean for tensioning? If you want just a little bit of droop to be in the final product, you're gonna probably need to tension it a little bit more than you would, you know, eyeballing it, right? Because as soon as you untension this, it's probably gonna sit into the cable a little bit, okay? <clears throat> so we've tensioned up our cable. We come over here to the other side, what are we doing? One through 10, yeah, yeah, one through 10. So again, the receiver goes on this end, splay open your cable, make sure your six strands are even on the outside, put the cone on the center strand, um, make sure that's seated, don't drop the cone like I did, make sure that's seated, bend that center strand over to capture it, right? And then you're literally just snipping those six ones on the outside and you're done, okay? Once that's seated on there, now what am I doing? Releasing tension. Yeah, yep. Releasing tension. Releasing tension on a come along is a little weird, um, but you're gonna find that there's 
a little lever here and a little lever here. This is not under tension, so it's gonna look funny, but you needed to basically tighten the cable slightly so that you can release this catch on this side and then slowly let it come out like that. When you, go, when you need to go do it again, you need to move the handle forward, give the cable a little bit of tension so you can release this lever and then let it out. And eventually this will get to the point of where this has slack in it. You can reach out to your Haven's grip, hold off the cable and then assess whether your cable is installed properly, right? When you're tensioning these, again, what it's doing is that center strand is driving this cone into the receiver further and further. And what that's doing is that's pinching those other six strands against the wall of this, this piece, okay? That whole system <clears throat> is obviously, you know, essentially not blocking on the back end of the lead. That's how this whole system works. Um, if you install it in a spot that's not very good and you're installing it in like, you know, through, let's, let's say this is my lead, right? Completely hollow. Is that appropriate for this kind of system? Probably not, right? Because if I just start wrenching on this thing, I could, I mean, I don't think I would collapse it, but you could arguably collapse it, right? <clears throat> depending on the tree species. Yeah, yeah, or just pull the whole thing through. Um, so it's not what we want. But once all that is done, assess your cable. What happens if your cable's not tight enough? You can tension it and move it. Yep, you can. What happens if it's too tight? Mm, what happens if it's too tight? <laughs> you might have to start all over. Yeah, yeah you might have to. Yeah, that really, that, that is not a fun day. But if it's too loose, yeah, you can put this right back on, tension it up a little bit. All that's gonna do is push the cable and the rig guy out a little bit further, right? So now you've got slack. All you gotta do is work that cone down. It'll, it'll unwind the cable itself, rebend the center strand, and then cut however much off you moved it. And if you're unsure, like when you're doing the come along side, leave an extra foot there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Another thing that really helped me with doing these, uh, Mike Andy showed me to use the back of your handsaw to set the mm. the wedge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it can be difficult to get your fingers in here when you've got like a long strand sticking out. If you take your handsaw, the back of the handsaw works its way through the strands, and you can knock the cone down the strand, right? And these cones will, as they're working down, thank you, like that. Uh, <laughs> the cones, as they're working their way down the strand, will open up the cable themselves, right? So you don't have to worry about sitting there and wrenching the cable open to get this to seat. If you're slow and deliberate enough, it will open up the cable itself. And if you notice, even inside the hole that you made with this. I don't know if everybody can see this. This cable is slightly opened right here. That's appropriate. That's supposed to do that. You know, it's, it's closed here, but it's slightly opened. That's all right, because this is installed properly. What if we are installing more than one cable? What are some things we need to consider? Static cable. Separate them enough that they don't rub, absolutely. What if I've got a third lead, like let's say the, the rear drive of this truck over here, and I need to put one cable from here to here and another cable from here to here? What do I need to consider? The spacing on your stem from cable to cable. Yeah, the spacing on this stem. Because if I put two of these right on top of each other, that's gonna put a lot of force in just one small little area. Uh, how far should they be away from each other? No less than the diameter. No less than the diameter of the of the trunk. Yeah, I think yeah I think that's the the standard. If I don't recall, yeah I think I think that's what the standard is. Um, but yeah, if this is you know an 18 inch lead. You know, 
give yourself about 18 inches, right? Again, you got to consider where are my scaffold branches, where are, you know, uh, old compartmentalized wounds, where are hollows, like all these things come into play. So it's not a perfect scenario every single time, but those are things we have to consider. If I already installed one cable here and I'm tensioning this, what do I need to consider? Yeah, if, I, if I'm tensioning this cable and I tension it too much and this cable goes slack, is that good or bad? Bad, yeah. Because you want both of these to work in harmony. You don't want one holding and the other one just being slack. All things to consider. Who here feels more comfortable with the rig guy system? Yes, good. Um, any other tips, tricks, or things on installing static cables that we didn't cover? When you're using that come along, Mm -hmm. uh, the strap is kind of long. Yes. <laughs> so it's really easy if you're not paying attention for that strap to scoot over the teeth yep. that it's trying to grab on, and then mm -hmm. you can't kind of run out of tension. Yeah. So keep an eye on that. Yep. For sure. Yeah, this, this strap is kind of long, um, but hopefully we'll, we'll get that fixed today. We'll see. Okay. No one, anybody else have any questions? Um, also, reduce waste on. Cable. Yes. You the tail of your rope, <clears throat> throw it mm -hmm. to you know the other lead that you want to cable to. Tie yep. a slip knot in it, and drop it down to whoever's cutting your cable. Yep. That way you have the perfect amount. You're not cutting ten feet off every time. Yeah. If you have a ten foot, if you need a ten foot cable and you're putting a twenty, if you cut a twenty foot piece, cable's not cheap. <laughs> I forget what the price is exactly, but I think I think we just bought seven hundred and fifty feet, and it was like three hundred bucks or something like that. Um, so not, the, not the most expensive thing, but also not the cheapest thing in the world. Um, I guess not, you know, not even counting shipping because the stuff's heavy. So make sure you're just getting it as close as you can, um, before you, you commit to making that cut. Installing the cable. If you've got a, let's say a class one, one inch on your silver maple <clears throat> and install a cable to support the codominant union, what are you doing first? Pruning. Pruning, why? <clears throat> Take that out of your X factor. I mean, you don't know what the tree exactly looks like. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna remove weight from the tree, right? Um, what if you've got this big, long, lanky lead over the house here, um, and let's say the RM specs that some of the weight needs to come off the end of that. Does that need to happen first or after the cable? First. Needs to happen first. Yep. Anybody else? A cable will also rope angle once you put it in there. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, once the cable's in here, if you are climbing, that's gonna make, you know, that's gonna change your climbing plan, right? Because if you've got, if you're on this side and you need to work that way, now all of a sudden you gotta come back up over the cable and then go down. Right, so consider those things before you commit to finishing your cable. Okay, anything else? If you're replacing cables, mm -hmm. do you want to cut yeah. the old ones first? Or do you want to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you are replacing a cable that uh, may be retired, um, et cetera, or I guess <laughs> that's another good point. When is a cable retired? Strands are broken. What else? What if you can't see this anymore? It's just completely compartmentalized. Retired. Time to put a new one in. Yeah, yep, retired for sure. Um, Harry's to Harry's point. Do you install your new cable first, or do you cut the old one first? Install the new one first. Don't don't cut the old one. Please don't cut cables under tension as much as possible. All right, especially when, like, if you're doing a removal and you've got a cable in there, um, there are methods to doing that. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but there's methods to working around that. Okay, good, good points. Um, if you install a new cable <clears throat> and the old cable that's below it, hopefully below it, is still 
tensioned, should you or should you not cut that old cable? Should not. Should not. I would say don't cut it. Just because you're replacing the old cable doesn't mean, or the, yeah, because you're replacing the old cable doesn't mean that the old cable is causing harm to the tree, right? But if it's got a belly in that cable, what is it doing? Nothing. Nothing. So you might as well cut it and get out of there and let the tree finish compartmentalizing. Make sense? Okay. Good points. Thank you for speaking up about those. Anything else? No? Okay, that's the end of our discussion on static cabling.